Welcome! In this tutorial, we'll explore the Hungarian algorithm through a real-world rideshare allocation problem. Step by step, we'll break down the algorithm before solving the entire problem efficiently with a powerful widget that you can install on TI Inspire. So let's get started! Alex, Ben, Chloe and Daisy are all booking rideshare vehicles. To ensure the most time efficient allocation, four nearby vehicles need to be strategically assigned. The red car is three minutes from Alex, seven minutes from Ben, eight from Chloe and 12 from Daisy. The blue car is eight minutes from Alex, six from Ben, five from Chloe and seven minutes from Daisy. And the green car? And the purple car? None of the riders have selected the carpool option. So we have four vehicles that need to be allocated to four riders. We start by gradually decontextualizing the problem. We remove the roads and geographical locations. We note that riders are on the left and they map to cars on the right. Riders don't map to riders and cars don't map to cars. So we have a bipartite graph. We can reinstate the waiting times on each connecting line. Now we have a weighted bipartite graph. Our diagram is very busy. So we can transfer the information to a table with the cars listed across the top and the riders down the side. In the absence of the Hungarian algorithm, we could just start allocating car one to Alex. However, Ben and Chloe would both want car two. If Ben gets car two, then Chloe's next choice would have been car one, but that's already been allocated to Alex. So we could allocate Chloe to car three, but Daisy would prefer car three. And so we have a problem. There are 24 different ways we can perform these allocations in our quest for the total minimum time. That's not too onerous. If we had 10 riders though, there would be more than a million permutations. So we need a process or algorithm to solve the problem more efficiently. This is where the Hungarian algorithm comes to the rescue. We start by changing the table to a matrix. Now, our problem's almost completely decontextualized. And we now have a mathematical tool upon which calculations can easily be performed. Step one of the Hungarian algorithm is called row reduction. Subtract the lowest element in each row from every element in that row. For row one, the smallest value is three. So we subtract three from every element in this row. For row two, the smallest value is six. So we subtract six from each element in this row. For row three, the smallest value is five. And for row four, the smallest value is seven. We now have some zeros in our matrix. So we need to play a game that I like to call Hungarian tic-tac-toe. We're on the noughts team. So we put a horizontal or vertical line through each nought. If the minimum number of lines required to cover them all is equal to the number of allocations, then we can jump straight to step four. We only needed two lines to cover them all. So we need to continue. Step two is similar to step one, except this time we're operating on the columns subtract the lowest element in each column from every element in that column. The minimum value in the first column is a zero, so we don't need to do anything. The same applies for the second column, so no need to do anything there. The minimum value in the third column is a one, so we subtract one from every element in the third column. Two is the smallest value in the last column, and now our matrix contains even more zeros. So it's time to play Hungarian tic-tac-toe. 
if the minimum number of lines required to cover all the zeros is equal to the number of allocations, we can jump straight to step four. Unfortunately, we only needed three lines, so we need to keep playing. In step three, we identify the smallest uncovered value. We add this quantity to any value that is crossed by two lines, and we subtract that quantity from any value that is not covered by a line. Our additions and subtractions are all complete, so it's time to play another round of tic-tac-toe. This time, I needed four lines to cover all the zeros, a combination of horizontal and vertical. And that is the same as the number of allocations in my problem, so the game is up. If fewer lines were required, step three would be repeated until the quantity of lines matched the allocations. Now, we're almost done. Step four. In this step, we use the zeros to make the allocations. Sometimes the solution is unique and other times there may be multiple solutions. So start with the row or column that contains just one zero. In this problem, column four has only one zero. So therefore, car four is allocated to row four. In other words, the purple car has been allocated to Daisy. We move on to the next allocation looking at the rows and columns. Row one has only one zero. So the red car is allocated to Alex. And row three has one zero. So the blue car is allocated to Chloe. That leaves the green car allocated to Ben. With all the allocations completed, we return to the original table and identify the allocations and calculate the total time. The result is three plus eight plus five plus nine, which equals 25 minutes. This amount represents the total amount of time that drivers would spend going to pick up their ride. From the rideshare company's perspective, it's the smallest amount of time that the drivers collectively spent getting to their riders, which also means from a mathematical point of view, the average wait time has been minimized. From Ben's perspective, he may be left wondering why two vehicles that were initially closer to him were allocated to other riders. Remember, the algorithm is designed to minimize the overall time, not that for the individual. Now, let's see how quickly all of these calculations can be done using TI Inspire. I've downloaded a widget from the Lazy Maths website and installed it. I'll create the matrix using the original wait times. Then, run the Hungarian algorithm program. And there it is, a total wait time of 25 minutes. But that's not all. You may have noticed we can also see the allocations and each step from the algorithm. So check out the Lazy Maths website. There's a link in the description below. Or you can download all the files from the Texas Instruments Australia website. If you'd like to see how to install a widget, check out our free student courses. That's all for this session. Be sure to like and subscribe to automatically be notified as new videos are released. Thanks for watching.